Hey everybody, Brian Fouch here. Welcome back to our third video with Ted Thomas here talking about tax lien certificates and tax deeds. Now, before we get into the next set of questions, uh, Ted, do you want to do a quick review of tax lien certificates? Okay, absolutely. Folks, all the properties in the United States have a tax, all right? But half of the states, if someone defaults and doesn't pay the tax, they'll issue what's called a tax lien certificate. That simply means they didn't pay the tax, but that county will let anybody that wants to pay the tax. So wherever you are online and you want to pay that person's tax, we can show you how to do it, and you'll get a certificate like this. So this said you paid someone else's tax. Now, most people aren't going to lose their property for tax. Tax is about 1% or 2% of value in most places. So they're not going to lose the property. So when they come in to pay their tax, they have to pay their tax, and then they were late, so they get their hand slapped. In Florida, they have to pay it eight, up to 18%. In Iowa, up to 24%. So you're getting the idea. So different states have different amounts of money. So when they come in, when they come in to pay, they have to pay their tax and whatever that whatever that interest rate is, you're going to make money on that tax lien certificate. The other states, they are not so good, you know, in terms of being benevolent. So a place like California or Washington or Oregon, what they're going to do is they're going to confiscate. That means that county is going to take the property and to get their money, they're going to auction it. And when they auction it, they don't care what they auction it for. They start the, bet, the auction at the back taxes. And once the first bid comes in, they get their tax money, so they don't care. But they sell that property with no mortgage and no deed of trust. Highest bidder gets it at the auction. So those auctions that I just mentioned have been going on for 200 years. I've been teaching people how to do it for 30 years. Every state has different rules. I can give you rules all day long, but it's much easier to just tell you, we got all the rules nailed and we'll teach you your county and your state whenever you're ready to learn it. Very cool. Now that's tax deed, so, or tax deed state. So you get the deed, you get ownership of the property. Now, when it comes to the tax liens, that certificate, you're not getting ownership of the property per se, but with a tax lien or, or certificate lien, how do you get, uh, how can you become the owner of the property? Okay, well, um, each state's going to be a little bit different. But basically, if you don't get paid on the certificate, you then tell the county, I didn't get paid, and then you're going to get the property. You either get paid or you get the property. Okay. And you get a property without a mortgage or a deed of trust. Now, obviously, they're going to put it through a foreclosure or they're going to put it through another auction. They're going to do something, and the county does all that for you. You don't, do, you don't, have, you don't have to do anything except sign the papers. So you're going to get paid or get something in value. Okay, makes sense. You're, now, yeah, well, you, you, it's a good way to get property. Now, I have clients actually get properties that way. And we have people get clients and make a lot of money, definitely. So that's where potentially you could buy a $500 tax lien and it could turn into a $100,000 property that you own all of a sudden. You could turn a sell. Well, I wasn't going to do it, but now I'm going to do it. All right. So I've got a couple I'm going to show you a picture of in a minute. They bought an $11,000 tax lien certificate. And they bought that certificate in Maricopa County, which is Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. The taxes came in the next year. They paid those taxes. Taxes came in another year. They paid those taxes. All right. So now they own all three years taxes on that property. All right. The people never paid. So they petitioned the county. The county, the judge awarded them the property. Turned out they did what we told them to do. We told them never buy anything unless you go out and look at it. So you looked at the property, it turned out it was a nice condominium, it was on a lake, it was fully furnished, all right? Nobody been in that property for three years. They ended up owning it. When they sold it, they had Zillow sell it, and they made $169,000. Watch this video, you won't even believe it. This is life-changing. This is something that really is something you can do 10 to 12 hours a week. You can do maybe even less than that, depending on your knowledge of that particular market or that system. This is an opportunity where you can earn more than you would at a job in a matter of days, in a matter of weeks. There's not that demand for you to fit societal um, pressures of getting dressed in the morning and, and making yourself up. I mean, it's it sounds silly, but it's a lot of work for women to have to also put on makeup and have to wear a certain outfit. You know, this is stuff you can do from your pajamas if you want. It's a lot easier than you think. It's not, it's not so scary once you know, okay, you can just ask these questions. And yeah. 
we turned to Ted, we turned to um, all his education, we turned to the coaching staff to get the questions we have answered because they're experts. This particular property was a very nice property and in our opinion nice enough to actually live in. We for were in 11. it total for 11000 Both of those. And we rented That's that like at 1225 for 15 months. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we collected all the money back from our initial investment and more. And more. Um, and then after holding it as a rental for some time, then we decided, okay, the property is um, appreciating so quickly. Yeah. That Phoenix was, was really hot. We ended up selling the property and the sales price was? Uh, we had a contracted sales price of 184000 and 169000 hit our bank account. There you have it. They made $169,000 on an $11,000 investment. It happens, folks. It happens. That's awesome. So let me ask you a question then. So that's that scenario. But let's say when a certificate, a certificate is redeemed. Now, that's when the, um, the owner of the property comes and pays the taxes plus the interest. How do you as the investor get paid? Is it a, is it a check or do you have to go to the oh, county? Or oh, oh yeah, pay? yeah. Well, I, I didn't explain that. Okay, well, it's so sophisticated now. So I'm an old guy. I've been doing this a long time. So the first tax certificate I bought, I raised my hand, bought the certificate. I came home and I got the certificate, right? So um, about seven months later, the county treasurer called me, not the actual treasurer, but a person from the county. They called me and said, your certificate is paid. Send the certificate to us and we'll send you a check. And that's what they did. Now, they don't do any of that nowadays. No, no, forget all that. Everything's online. So I... I, I push a button and I buy the certificate today. I push the button. Okay, they said you own the certificate. So they sent me an email. <laughs> mm -hmm. I get an email. All right, now when the certificate pays, they don't even call you anymore. They just say, they just ping you on your cell, your cell phone and it said, we just deposited the money you paid for the certificate and here's the interest and it's all in your bank account. That's all they do. It's all done electronically now. Very simple. So then to tag on to that, that, that response, um, what's like the fastest state to get access to property or the fastest state to get access to a property if you were trying to do that? Oh, well, um, I told you earlier, my favorite was Georgia. Yeah. Uh, Humboldt State is uh, in Georgia. You can get it in one year. You can get the property or get paid. But Texas is even faster. Now, Texas is a big state, 250 counties. They do an auction every month. So if you raise your hand, you buy a redeemable deed. Now, right now, you own the property now. A redeemable deed. All right, now, if the people don't come in and pay in 180 days, you get the property. 180 days, that's six months. If they do come in and pay, you get all your money back plus 25%. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's a win-win no matter what. It's just a matter of what the end result is going to be. And uh, if you go to options in texas some of them will have like i've gone to houston a bunch of times they have 200 properties sometime at the auction 200. Hmm. so your worst case is to make 25. in texas your worst case that you can make your absolute worst case is 25 percent. so if you raised your hand and you bought the redeemable deed today and a guy realized he didn't pay his tax he came in the next day you paid you you get all your money back in 25 percent it's not an interest return. It's a penalty. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense now. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So knowing all these kinds of things that you can go do, these ins and outs of this, uh, do you need an attorney or a broker to to buy these tax defaulted properties or tax lien properties? No, no, no. This is a, this is a business that was designed 200 years ago when people couldn't read and write. So the local county, they have, the local county has a problem that people don't pay tax. Because how are you going to pay the school teachers? How are you going to pay the fire department? Right. How are you going to pay the police department? And that, those are all county checks. So if the county doesn't get money right away by selling a tax lien, then they've got to they've got to get the property and get it sold. So they've got to do one or the other. And I'll show you a great example of that now. So I had this guy. He's over in Vancouver, British Columbia, and I said, "Why don't you go to Los Angeles auction?" And he said, oh, I'm not going there. There's too many people there. There's too much fussing going on. I said, really, you ought to go there to that auction. And so finally, he decided to go to the auction. And um, he didn't believe me, but I told him, and now I'm telling all you guys, that if you go to a Los Angeles auction, 
and they don't sell the property, the, sh the treasurer will announce a subsequent, maybe the next day or a couple of days later, that they're going to have an auction. Now, the treasurer then can lower the price whatever they want. The treasurer is the most powerful individual in government. Now, what do I mean by that? The treasurer can actually lower the price. So the price is always the back taxes because that's what they need. So the treasurer, in this case, lowered the price. And my guy went out and bought five mm. residential lots. I told him to buy residential lots because he didn't have to worry about squatters. He didn't have to worry about people people burning it down, uh, drug dealers, didn't have to worry about fixing them. He bought five properties for less than 8.5 cents on the dollar, less than 10 cents on the dollar. Think about that. I'm gonna show you his video right now. Folks, let me explain this. You'll never have to work another day in your life. The, the insecurity is gone if you just follow in this man's footsteps. Now we're gonna talk about Los Angeles, California, where the starting bid is the back taxes, and they had over 3,000 properties. And that's the auction book that I mentioned earlier. Here's what happened. My name is Renee Goche from Surrey, BC. In October, I went to Los Angeles County tax deed sale, bought five properties for roughly $85,000. They are vacant lots. One is in Malibu, four in downtown LA. Gorgeous properties. Their value? Tax assessed value is just over $1 million. I did this after taking Ted's course in under 90 days. Thanks, Ted. Just imagine Los Angeles, California, a million dollars worth of properties, and he only spent $85,000. That's eight and a half cents on the dollar. Folks, this is in your best interest. Once you learn this, you can do it for the rest of your life. But you know what you're thinking? I know what you're thinking. You're saying, how would I ever sell those properties? Well, use my Walmart strategy. What is that? It's buy low and sell low. So we had a million dollars worth of properties. Let's give an 80% discount and see what we have left. Well, we still have 200,000 left and he only spent $85,000. Look at the property made just one deal, one auction in Los Angeles, California. How about that? So there you have it, folks. He's, he said it. He bought him for eight and a half cents on the dollar just because he knew what to do. So he went to the first auction, kept his money in his pocket, waited till the next day, bought for eight and a half cents. Is that good to know? Sounds good to me. Don't know <laughs> it's happening every um, day. Yeah. So, okay. So then you mentioned the story of this him right there in the, in the previous one. So let me ask you another question. So if someone had hypothetically like, you know, 40, 50, $60,000 to invest, would you buy a lot of small lien certificates or a couple of big ones? Well, if I was buying lien certificates, I would buy a bunch of smaller ones, meaning five or $10,000 ones, because anybody wants to come in and pay the tax, the government's going to take the money. So some people are going to come in in two weeks and pay you. Some people are going to come in two years. So you don't know. So if you bought... So if you bought one big one, and then they come in and paid you. Now your money's just going to sit on, you know, not making any money because they, they paid it off. So I'd, I'd buy a bunch of it. But if I were buying property, I would make sure that I was buying properties that weren't too expensive to start with. I'd like to buy, uh, like we just had a guy buy in Michigan, invested $60,000 in the property. But when he sold it, when he sold it, he made $74,000. Uh, he got his 60 plus 74. So that was pretty okay. good. That's, okay. that's what, so, so we, we can teach them both ways and we do, and we give them, the choice is up to them because it's their money. Right. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Now with the tax deed properties, cause you're getting ownership of the properties, unlike the certificates where you're getting the, like the certificates of the property said with a deed property or deed home, are you responsible for that home for things like utilities, uh, water, heating, bills like that? Well, it's just like when you own a home. Whatever you own, you have to secure it and take care of it. If you get a utility bill, you have to pay that. If you get a phone bill, you have to pay that. So you, when you buy at the auction, they're actually going to give you a deed, a deed that's going to have, on the top of the deed here, it's going to have your name on it, and it's going to have a description of the property, and you're going to own that property. And then this deed is in the county records. So the whole world knows that you own that property. 
So you have to pay you have to pay your own bills on those properties. Okay, and would you recommend in, like uh, insurance on the property too? Oh, I'm glad you said that. Boy, I, I leave that out. Um, you definitely want to have insurance on the property because, um, you know, vandals could get in there or you could have a a, a, pro a problem. Well, uh, we had a lady recently, uh, one of our coaches, as a matter of fact, she bought a property and had some old trees. Then they had a windstorm. One of the trees came down and crushed the garage. Mm -hmm. And the insurance, the insurance company paid off the whole thing. That was kind of nice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've had a tree fall on a property that I've owned before too, and it was, it was, yeah, not fun. But the, as you said, the insurance company did come in and fix it. So there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another question, real quick, because because I've done the auctions before, and this is a, a a thought that I had. Can you buy houses at auction, like with credit cards, if you have credit cards with those kind of balances? Uh, you can't in all the states, but there's four states that you definitely can do that. So okay. uh, I bought I've I bought Colonial House. If you know what a Colonial House is, a big house and I bought a colonial on uh, five acres with big 75 year old oak tree that probably is probably worth 400,000. I paid 150 and I paid it all on a credit card. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. So, so Michigan does that. New York does that. Um, I think it's uh, Arkansas and there's one other, I can't remember what it is now. Uh, but anyway, the, there's four States, but my materials would show people. So I recommend use a, use a credit card. Now, because I had that credit card, I could then go buy another property. Because I, I had I had numerous credit cards, but you can get those online now. Nowadays, you can get credit cards online with very low interest rates. I mean, like yeah, ten and twelve percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, so it's amazing. Now, let's think about this. Now, this is something that uh, I've heard some other investors ask, and I want to you know get your opinion on this as well, Ted. So, these homes are in debt to the banks, right? Because the banks have a mortgage on the home, so they have a lien position on the home. So, so one is how can a tax lien just, you know, get that house out from underneath the bank? And then why does the bank allow this to happen? Because it seems like the banks are losing on these transactions. Okay. So um, the rules in the United States are that the first lien on every property is the tax lien. So when they created a state, then they created counties. The county has to have a revenue source. Otherwise, how could you pay the police and the fire department and the school teacher? So the revenue source for the county is, is taxes. All right, so that's the first lien on the property. Anybody else that comes to that property, let's say the farmer comes along and wants to build a house on there. Okay, so he's gonna build a house, so he borrows from the Bank of America. So that's really gonna be the first lien for the mortgage, but the first lien on the property is always the taxes. So if the taxes aren't paid, the taxing entity will foreclose and wipe that mortgage out. Now, what most people forget about, if you get a lien on a property, this is just basic real estate, when you get a, a mortgage on a property, all right, when you sign the mortgage, it's a promissory note. And there's three covenants in every promissory note. The first is that you'll pay it. The second is that you'll pay the taxes. And the third is you'll pay insurance. So you hear people talk about it all the time, the mortgage plus is taxes and insurance. All right, so, the mortgage is the second lien, uh, is the first lien, and then the next lien is going to be is, is going to be the taxes. If you don't pay the taxes, then the mortgage lender shouldn't come in and 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 take the property before the county does. But there's a lot of banks, unfortunately, they're not very well run, and so they don't pay attention. And these properties are being auctioned all the time. You will see hundreds of them. Every property in this book. Now this. Over a thousand properties in this book. I can show you lots of it. This is just an auction list, okay, for Los Angeles. Every one of these properties had an auction, had a mortgage at one time or another. But now, because it's going to auction, the treasurer is the most powerful person in government. The treasurer can wipe out a tax lien and a, they can change the price. They're the only person in government that's allowed to do that. So um, so they they the mortgage is wiped out. So all these properties ha have the mortgage wiped out. But here's what a person has to do. A person has to learn that that mortgage is going to wipe out. But, you know, there's other liens that could be on the property. So the mortgage is wiped out of the trustee. What about the IRS? What about the municipal? What about a judgment lien? We teach you to find out what those liens are. We teach you how to just use your computer and you can look and see if any of those liens are there. Well, you don't want to buy a property with a big IRS lien on it. But here, I'll give you a secret. But there's an IRS lien on it, and you buy it, the IRS lien will only stay on there for 120 days. 
at the end of 120 days, it drops off the property. Ooh. Would you like to know that? There you go. Okay. Yeah, or, yeah. or the IRS takes the property and you get all your money back. I said the IRS takes the money and gives you all your money back. Why wouldn't you go to the auction? There you go. Okay. The deed of trust is off. All right. Now, but you have to learn. I can't teach you everything, but that's why I do that class twice a month. You want to get below me and get signed up. Cost you 47 bucks. I don't do anything free. I'm not an internet marketer. I'm a teacher and I got to get paid. Sounds good, Ted. Well, with that, uh, thanks once again for this uh, very informative video. Um, I'm learning okay, quite good. a bit as well on these. So with that, we'll see you guys in the next one.